This is the model of an engine from a Type 7C U-Boat. It's a supercharged Germanifert six-cylinder four-stroke diesel. It delivers about 2,800 to 3,200 shaft horsepower and propel the submarine along at about 17.7 knots on the surface and 7.6 knots submerged. I think it's taken me longer to build this than it did the real thing. Let's go and have a look and see how I did it. Hi everyone, Ted here. Ted from eModels, eModels.co.uk, that's them. And we're here for part five of the Trumpeter U-Boat, uh, the U552, uh, the Type 7C U-Boat in a 148 scale. You can already see some of the sections behind me that uh, we did in the uh, earlier videos. And this is part five. And we're going to have a look at the um, engine. Uh, which you saw right at the start and it's taken an age to build because it's a multitude of parts it's a kit in itself uh, it's amazing the detail in it and it's taken me an absolute age to get together even to get it to this stage uh, I would have filmed most of the build and putting it together but there's been so much swearing, so much drinking, so much lying down in a darkened room that it was easier to put it all together, show you where we're up to and continue it from there. Anyway, without further ado, let's get across to the bench and we'll have a look at the rest of it. Let's put the rest of it together and get some paint on it. <sighs> it's been a long one. See you in a moment. Right then, this is where we came in. This is what you saw right at the start and in the introduction. Um, one of the first things I'll point out is that you'll actually see it's on a little bit of a pallet. Um, I built that just really as a bit of fun, but it actually comes in quite useful uh, because the way that the, uh, I think it's the clutch or the thrust bearing here uh, for the shaft, the way that goes in there, it does leave the engine a little bit sort of slanted if you're sitting on the bench and trying to put parts on uh, it's a little bit as you see under here it's a little bit uneven and uh, it's nicer to work on it straight so I just built a little bit of a, a pallet to put it on I built it as a pallet because it just looks like a bit of fun but anything just to straighten it up and just to keep it straight as the glue sets and things don't sort of get out of line and things like that uh, one thing I will mention is that as you can see there are a multitude of parts and lots and lots of bits of pipe work all on there and this has to be fit in order have a look at the instructions try not to jump ahead and think oh I'll just get that bit on now and get that bit on it won't fit if you do fit uh, this pipe here uh, where's my little pointy stick you see this pipe this part here this pipe here goes all the way under all this and comes around and goes up the top here and then along over these I think they're fuel injectors uh, and under here it goes all along here if you put these pit, bits on here before you put that bit in it won't fit ask me how I know that so take heed of the instructions. Uh, the instructions are a little bit sort of difficult to understand, and you uh, let's let's find the instructions. Uh, here we go. Fetch the instructions in. Um, oops. There's lots of parts. Move that out of the way. Wobbly camera. There's lots of parts on here, and you really have to get a pencil or something or a pointy stick just to work out where these parts go and trace them along right that goes in there it doesn't actually tell you what order to go in uh, but get all these pipes in first this one and this one uh, get these parts on and see there's some more pipe work over here get the pipe work bits in as well uh, if you can hear that noise in the background uh, that's actually rain on the shed roof 
it's chucking it down out there. Glad I'm in here. Got time to spend at the bench rather than out in the rain. Uh, another thing about the pipe work is the sprues. The sprue, uh, or the trees, or whatever you want to call them, are delicate. You see on here, this little piece of pipe work here. See how it's held on? It's held on quite firmly. Um, that's fine. What you will find is that some of the parts, uh, most of them have gone now, but take this one for instance, this one here. Fetch it back in the shot, this one. Because of these, I find a pointy stick, because of these little bits that stick out, that go after the, uh, the parts where it's held to the sprue, because of the stick out and they are very very thin see that one up there these do tend to get knocked about uh, you know you get the problem where you get one sprue against another you know you, you take them out of the box you open the bag and you put them down and then one sprue will get stuck on another and they will snap believe me they will snap without a thought and then you have to sort of glue them back and try and figure out which way they go on and that does take a lot of time another thing about them as well is how to take them off uh, now let's click across to another camera and we'll have a look at how to take something as small and delicate as this off right here we go again uh, this time uh, the voice is a little bit different on this because um, I forgot to record the sound uh, so I'll try and get with a bit of a voiceover but anyway what we're going to do we're going to show you another way to cut these pieces off without using your sprue cutters what you do need is um, a four to edge saw similar to this uh, it comes on uh, there's uh, three or four blades that come on a, a four to edge uh, sprue um, I picked these up from uh, e-models uh, when I was down in the store um, nice and fine, really sharp blades, so you've got to watch yourself for these. And they just fit into a scalpel type uh, blade. Uh, so, right, we'll get on with this and we'll show you how to cut it. So, right, pull that way. Uh, so, rather than using the uh, meaty sprue cutters, uh, what we're going to do, we're just going to cut these off the tree, uh, off the sprue, whatever you want to call it, just by slicing through uh, where it's held on. Uh, we're leaving all the other bits until the end and then we can cut them off later and it's far easier to do that uh, Right, so just slice them off As I say, if you're using your sprue cutters you may find that because the parts are delicate and thin they might actually squeeze the plastic and cause it to snap uh, but this fetches them off far cleaner uh, and much nicer There we are, that's that bit loose now uh, I've really just I've, when, I, when I cut this off, I realised that um, I actually don't know where it's from, so I'll have to have a look at it in the instructions shortly and keep it to one side. Uh, I cut this off just for a, for a bit of a demonstration for you guys. So right, let's get on with this. So right, we still don't need these. Uh, so we can now cut off the extra bits of nubs as such. Um, we can use that, we can go back for that for our um, scalpel. I'll use the Swan Morton with a number 10 blade. Nice and simple and fits in the hand really nicely for me. Uh, other people might like to use the X-Acto knives, uh, the different shapes and knives. They all fit into different people's hands. Everybody's got different uh, needs and likes. Uh, so it's just a matter of then of slicing the parts off. And that's it over there. And then we can use uh, the knife, uh, which doesn't have to be used as a knife itself, but can be used as a scraper as well. And we'll see that in a moment. So, I'll just finish cutting the nub off there. You'll find that once you get it cut from the sprue, you can actually get it then down onto the cutting mat uh, and uh, apply the pressure to it. Uh, without fear of bending any parts or pinging them off around the room. So, uh, the extra plastic can then be just scraped off like that. So remember, you don't have to use your knife as a knife all the time. Uh, they make ideal scrapers as well, which is often a way to take parts off. 
uh, the nubs off like that one. Should be some scraping noises here, but obviously I'm doing a voiceover. Uh, another thing you can use, uh, just finish it off with the uh, skinny sticks. Uh, these are really nice ones from uh, UMP. Uh, come in various grades. And obviously nice and thin, getting any of the uh, nooks and crannies. Uh, no, we don't need them yet. Just finish it off. This is why when you come to uh, paint your model, you put some primer on. Uh, because it will always highlight any nubs or uh, pieces of uh, sprue that uh, you haven't taken off. Uh, right, that's it. Let's go down to the next bit. Here we are. Here's my little pot available from all good food, fast food outlets. And in here I keep uh, some of the tiny, tiny bits. And you can see how small they are. and try not to lose them I lost this I lost one of them this one you can see here it's how tiny the parts are on the sprue and then on top of those on top of the plastic part is a little photo etch can it come into focus uh, let's try it wobbly camera while we focus it in the, on top of that is a tiny photo etch valve wheel and you can see how small they are. I actually lost one. Uh, I'd counted them off. First of all I'd counted them off as, uh, can you see I come back, back into focus, this camera is terrible for keeping focus. Right let's move this down a little bit. I'd actually counted them all out and I counted them all back again and it says on the instructions to make six put that out of the way, I don't want that one I'd count them all out and it says on the instructions make six so I'd cut them all off, found the parts, cut them off and then I realised there were five I'm trying to get the camera. There we go. I counted them off and found them with five. And I thought, I've lost one. So I spent a whole day looking around, searching the carpet to see if the carpet monster had it. No, it hadn't. In fact, what I'd found in these parts here were that actually there were five together on the sprue. If you have, if you, when you get to this stage, if you're building it, be, be aware of this. There's five of these on the sprue together, and there is one, one separate one, in a different position altogether on the sprue. So, in fact, I'd only cut five off and was looking for one that I hadn't even cut off. Then, to add insult to injury, when I was holding a piece, as I am now, ping, it went. It disappeared. I knew I had it this time because I heard it go. Ping! It had gone. And it wasn't in a situation where it would fall on the floor or fall into my lap because it was in mid-air when it pinged out the tweezers. It had disappeared. So, after another day's frustration of searching the carpet, I decided I'd have to make my own. I was in the process of making my own left the bench for the evening and model making chicken walks into the workshop uh, through the door that had been left open oh, well she can't open the doors herself and jumped onto the bench and knocked everything flying all over the bench where but fortunately she found the missing part and this is the very part that she found the one where I haven't painted the, the valve wheel so congratulations to model making chicken we found the part anyway uh, right time to get some p 
paint on this. What I'm going to do first is give it a coat of primer uh, and then uh, check it's all right. Uh, check there's no bits that want rubbing down or remaking, retouching, which is a good purpose for primer. Uh, if you're priming it, uh, one thing it will do is because there's a different uh, I can't think of what I'm going to say. Because there's photo etch and there's plastic together, different mediums, uh, the primer will bring them all together so that when they're painted, uh, the primer will provide an even coat for getting the paint on. Uh, and there's two coats of paint or to go on, uh, two colours to go on this. Uh, there's engine grey, um, and there is, it does say in the instructions, uh, Mr. Hobby Colour uh, 336. Uh, hemp. Uh, I don't know really. I think I'll go with the colour call out. I have seen these engines done in a little uh, in a bit of a different colour, a blue grey. Uh, I'm not quite sure whether I'm going to go down that route yet. Uh, but that won't be for this video. Uh, we'll get the uh, primer coat on and then we'll decide what colours we're going to do on it. So that may be for the next episode uh, right I'm gonna go and get some stuff ready and we'll give this a coat of primer okay see you in a moment okay what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna uh, put a coat of primer on the parts that uh, I've already got built um, I've got the half mask uh, because I'm not spraying in the spray booth. I've brought it over here. Normally uh, with being acrylics, um, you could get away with just a bit of ventilation or the extractor fan working on the spray bench. Uh, but I suppose really you should wear a mask as well, uh, particularly with me not having any ventilation at the desk. I brought the, uh, the parts over to spray at the desk. A little bit easier to film and there's more light over here. Uh, so I've got the half mask. I'll be putting that on. So um, I'll do, hopefully, if it works, I'll do a voiceover about what's going on uh, rather than trying to talk through the mask. Okay, let's go and get this spread. Okay, here we are then. Uh, this time the intentional voiceover. I'll be going to put some of this one shot primer on from me. Uh, excellent stuff. It lies down really well and goes on nice and easily. To do it with, we'll use the H&S uh, Gravity Feed Airbrush uh, with a 0.4 needle, uh, about 20 psi, something like that. Uh, so uh, we'll just get it ready and fill the uh, paint cup. Give it a shake as well, of course. And now we can uh, start and apply the primer to this. Uh, give it some nice light mist coats to start. I always do that. It breaks the surface tension down on the plastic itself. Some people sort of mistake it for maybe a greasy surface. Uh, but what you need to do is get the, the paint just to break the surface tension of the plastic. So a nice mist coat. Usually does it. Easy to do like that. Try not to be too impatient. And just take your time. Uh, and Change the angle of the piece of spray and get in all the nooks and crannies and get in everywhere. Okay, continue like that until it's all covered. Uh, and in the meantime, rather than watching it all being sprayed in real time, we'll just uh, speed it up a little bit. Okay, uh, back to you in a moment. Here we are then, here's the uh, primer coat done, it's dry but uh, I'm going to leave it overnight to uh, to harden off, um, you could probably 
carry on and paint it in about half an hour, an hour after you've done it. But I'll leave it overnight just to uh, make sure it's gone all hard. Uh, and whilst I've had the spray, uh, the airbrush out, I've uh, gone and the white balance sorts itself out. There we go. I've gone and primed up uh, some of the superstructure parts, the, the bulkheads as well. And these are done in white, obviously, as you can see. And for that, I've used the uh, UMP. Oops, there's a flash. Everything is white, so it's upsetting everything. Uh, it's using the UMP uh, Ultimate Primer in white. Um, this the the white uh, takes a little bit more patience to get right, uh, but otherwise it's as good as the the grey and the black it goes on superbly um, one thing I will say about this is that you need to put it on in thin coats especially the first couple of applications the first couple of coats put it on in a mist coat and leave them to dry what needs to happen is that the paint needs to break the surface tension of the plastic um, you might think that oh crikey it's it's bubbling or something uh, it's it's splitting I've got grease on the parts you haven't it's just the nature of the paint you just need to to leave it on uh, very thin mist coats leave it for 10 minutes and in a mist coat as it says on the back uh, leave it 10 minutes between coats and then build it up very slowly you just need a little bit more patience but it goes on as well as the other stuff and it certainly goes on as well as the primer for the engine right everything's all different colors my white balance is uh, all to pot uh, so in the meantime while these are drying off um, let's go and have a look at something else see you in a moment there it goes again look look at that okay whilst the uh, paint's drying i just thought we'd uh, move on and do something else something a little bit interesting just to break the monotony up of doing um compartments and things i thought we'd get on and do the uh the the flak gun the aerial defense gun now it's just worth pointing out that this part the most of the parts for the flak gun are on sprue e and as i've said there are some very delicate parts and uh, uh, it's now obvious why trumpeter uh, protect some of the sprues in um, like a polystyrene uh, sheet. It, even when you're picking the sprue up, if you pick it up wrongly and you get your finger on something like that and the sprue bends under its own weight, it's going to snap. So just take some care uh, looking after them. When you unwrap things, wrap them back again and then put them back into the uh, bubble wrap or, or the plastic wrap that it's coming right i'll go get this done then we'll have a look at uh, i'm gonna go at this well i'll get this denubbed and things like that and then we'll come back and have a quick look at uh, doing the the flak gun bit of interest okay see you in a moment all ah, right welcome back uh right the uh flak gun the, the aerial defense scatter gun as they call it has all been cut off and i've put it in my little box of compartments now, you don't have to have one of these but sometimes i just find it handy to keep all the parts together um as long as you keep it up upright and you don't go carrying it around the parts should stay uh pretty well together um, what, what you can do with this I picked this up just from uh, a local pound shop um, keep all the parts together I've put sort of um, these mini sticky pads varying colors just in the bottom just so you can highlight the numbers and you can also write on them there's that part we cut off before you can also write on them the part number that's s67 so I'll know where that is in the future there's some of the other parts of the engine room even big enough for this to hold my little pots containing things in now there's a scatter gun there's that's in there i'm going to leave that in there for the moment because this scatter gun involves the use of um some photo etch uh, so we need a couple of parts out of here that one i think and that one right put them to the side there and put this 
over here and if you can see that again it's still chucking it down outside uh, photo etch this is the photo etch from the kit as you see there's already some parts gone off it this here is the part that we need uh, to get that off what I normally do you can buy purpose made uh, photo etch sort of sheets of cutting what I've got is some acrylic uh, I sort of got it off online as samples from a, a DIY store uh, usually I find it's quite easy to use for cutting uh, this is the one that's already been cut as hence the marks where is it put it down put that on top of it and then use the other bit of acrylic because it's see through you can see where you're going to go over there and then uh, I'll use one of these exacto scalpels just to cut through the tab holding the photo etch on it's often a good idea just to not necessarily skip stages but sometimes when you've been doing a thing a lot of things that are quite repetitive it's often good just to go and do something else uh, another part of the kit or even maybe another another model uh, this uh, kits especially large kits can sort of sap your mojo at times uh, or they can just become a bit monotonous especially it's, you know if you're building a tank for instance you've got lots of tank tracks tank wheels to do and sometimes you need to go and have a break so that's what I thought I'd do with this one it's, you know, I've been building compartments for a while it's time to get a little bit extra done now this is uh, just about cut out now and it's also covered on both sides in uh, some clear clear film so if I can get it out it will come out now I haven't a clue how this is going to bend put that over there, excuse me for the rattle, uh, get this out of the way as well, there, now then, the instructions tell us that it bends to fit that, there, that's it, but it doesn't tell us which way to bend it, hmm, and it also bends around that there. It's obviously a catch net for the rounds, for the spent rounds as they come out of the uh, the gun. So does that go there, that there, and that there? I'm right. I think that's it. There's a part that will glue there, and then it will glue there. And then it will glue there, he says. Hmm. Okay, let's have a go. Fetch you my photo bender. This could all go horribly wrong. Horribly wrong. Just ready to find a spot that will bend. Right. Now there's a little bit. If we look on here. I do find all, uh, I do choose all the hard parts to show. If, if that goes up there, then it bends there, which could correspond to that piece there. See how it, see how it goes up and then bends in. 
Let's have a go. If it doesn't work, we'll have to bend it straight again. So there, top of that, top of that. Tighten it down. And I use another exacto flat blade. It's a bit used and rusty, but it doesn't need to be anything special for this. It's just to bend the photo etch. Up like that. I think. Now that should correspond with that. Does it? Sort of. Hmm. See the principle now, I think. I think that goes there, and then this will go there across like that. Oops, trying to get three finger, three, uh, trying to get it all in together. I don't. Let's try again. That will go in there, like that. Then that will go in there, like that. Are you with me? I think we're getting there. I think that's the way it does it. This may or may not work. Again. If it all goes wrong, as I say, we can bend it straight again. Sort of like a goal post. Set of goals for the garden. And that then. We'll fit in there like that. I think we have it. Right. Ah, right. What would have been better? Uh, yes, one side is longer than the other. I just noticed that. So what I'm trying to do here is just apply some manual pressure in the corners because the corners should actually be rounded so see here see how this uh, corner I don't point your stick I can see it better then you I can point it out better this here this uh, length here is slightly longer than this one so that there go the right way around does fit in there like that. Right, it's gonna go up. I think we've got it by George. I think we've got it. Then that one sticks in there like that. Yes. Right, let's clean this photo etch up. Take the foil off it. The foil, the film off it. Static. Go away, go, go away, go away, go. And the film off that bit.
Yeah, when you come to bend it, you'll actually see where the uh, angles change. It needs to bend in there in that corner. And the angle changes up here as well. So it bends there, so it goes straight across there. Now I'm thinking that this would actually be a piece of knitting rather than obviously brass or steel or anything like that. So the catch net would sort of sort of fall in there. Right. A little bit of cleaning up just to do in there. Now I think no, this one needs to be cleaned as well. I've got my gloves on today because I um, injured my finger at work and it doesn't look too nice so rather than inflict that upon you it's a lot nicer just to have a pair of gloves it's under there right okay where's my glue uh, for the edge we need super glue where is it oh, for, yep there it is okay bit of super glue medium uh, gives a bit of play time, play time, bit of extra time to play with it. And hopefully we can get things glued. Uh, we're about to glue our fingers together. Uh, going back to um, these little notepads, what I showed you earlier for the bottom of the gadget box. I uh, actually use them just for. Uh, Putting a touch of super glue on. Cocktail stick. Cocktail stick. Right, let's have a go and watch how this doesn't glue at all. Because it never does. So, what we could do in there, I clean this up. so you can see it a little bit and then we'll try and put that he says try being the optimum word so the right way around that way I'll stick that on there I think it's about four switch. It either goes together brilliantly or you could take all day try to glue it together. And this isn't going to go. You can often tell straight away whether or not it's going to glue. And this isn't going to glue. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. There we go. Just hold that in there. Oops. Just try and run a little bit extra just in there and then what we'll do we'll move the photo etch into the plastic. Sometimes the dampness in your breath can set it off. Just a bit of heavy breathing in the background. You ever wonder why people never want to show how to do photo etch on camera?
try and keep it as still as possible because the slightest movement sometimes it's a funny stuff super glue. glue your fingers together instantly anything else if you move it it doesn't seem to bond uh, I think we've got it cracked now what I'm going to do I'm going to let that photo etch uh, that glue set where it is now and then I'll work the other side, this side, I'll work that in to fit the bottom of the basket. There, we're getting there now. See, I've just got to close that gap up there and form it. Form it around. The basket. No, nope, completely gone. It's beat me. It's beat me. It's beat me. Couple of minutes. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'm gonna. This isn't gonna. This isn't gonna beat me. I'm gonna get this done. See you in a moment. Ah. Wow. Well, here we are again. Oh, I wish I could come back and say that was easy. I just went away and it glued together fantastically. It didn't. Um, I had to go away and get some uh, fresh super glue because uh, the old super glue, uh, super glue does go off. Uh, if you leave it on the shelf, it will become less effective over time. Uh, I think the batch I had was uh, beyond its date. Uh, Plus, as well, you can keep super glue uh, in the fridge. Uh, it keeps it fresh. Uh, so I went and got away a new batch of super glue and started to glue this together. When we used the uh, photo edge bender, forget it. Forget about what I said. Don't use that. The way I found the best way to do this piece of uh, photo edge, there's a little gap there just at the bottom. I need to fill that in. Uh, form it around the bottom of the basket glue one piece on bend it in with the rounded edges glue that piece on glue that piece on glue that piece on let it set glue that piece on and let it set then put um, this part on I can't remember what the number is uh, E34 E34 if you're looking at the instructions put that part on glued to the bottom of the basket and then you can form the rest of the basket to fit the framework that's the easiest way that I've found doing this uh, there's one or two little gaps but it won't be noticed when it uh, all gets together and glued and painted and everything like that uh, as I say I believe it's probably most likely to be a net rather than something metallic I'm certainly if I certainly if I'm wrong you guys can tell me by putting something in the comments below uh, that's the way that's going to go together uh, and now I need to go have a lie down in a dark room and then tomorrow uh, I'll come back and we'll have a look at putting the gun together and get it all spread up and by that time the uh, engine should be dry from its uh, primer coat. Primer doesn't take long to dry, but I just like to give it sort of overnight to dry. Uh, and we'll sort of uh, have a roundup and uh, see where we go from there. Right, I'm going to have a cup of tea, I'll go to bed and lie down, and then we'll come back and uh, we'll do finish the rest of this gun off. Okay, see you in the morning. Well, a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds for you. See you in the morning. Bye. All oh, right, I'm back. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever the time is that you're watching this video. Uh, let's carry on with the, uh, the flat gun. Uh, I put it all the way last night. And just about to get the parts out now, we'll put it together. So we have the that give us all the trouble last night the cage 
the round the bullet catcher if that's the right word uh, then we've got some uh, detail for the plinth I think there's one part that I haven't cut off this yet that's the um, the wheel that goes on the side of the gun uh, but I'll cut that off later on and as we see we keep all the parts in here and it's just a matter of getting them back out again there we go so we'll get this together should go together fairly simply there's a few parts all the parts Oops. Right, keep the lid on that so we don't lose anything put it to one side the instructions right simple enough uh, one thing about having a little compartment box for all your bits you can as I say you can cut all the, uh, the parts off and denub them and then you can keep them ready for the build uh, find out what tab your extra thing I should really see now how quickly sometimes these bits do go together that's that <coughs> and a B41 that goes in there no it doesn't say how far down it needs to go on that right I'll put B18 on top first that's that one I don't think there's any way of making this movable let's check it straight The collar he, uh, here needs to be straight rather than the the part on the top. Now that's that one done. That that's dry. Uh, what else do we need? E28, that's the base itself. I say, it's sometimes just uh, nice just to do something. A bit interesting, and I thought the gun, a bit of armament, might be a bit more interesting. Uh, and just be a change from doing millions of parts in the compartments. Now you may think that the cost of this kit is quite excessive it's, but however the amount of time that you spend on it compared to the number of kits you would have bought over that time would be quite comparable so I would think this is what a five kit build five if you split the build into the number of kits you would have built in, due, in, the, in the amount of time I reckon you build about five kits. So what? That's that's my way of thinking anyway. Uh, that one. Right. This is a B31, and the gun goes on there. Which way up does it go? Might be easier. <coughs> excuse me. If we put the magazine in first. And. Making sure it's the right way round, it will fit. It will it fit another way? Oops. No. Look quite silly if it went the wrong way around. It won't fit. 
usually the tolerances are quite tight with trumpeter and it needs to go in there like that so just a touch little nub there that we missed just take that off There it goes in now. Just put a touch of glue on that. Oops, there's my camera flashing again. It has been doing this, I must. I don't know why it does it. I think it's the white balance. Right, there. The magazine on the gun. Okay, we'll leave that to set as well. Where else is to go? Uh, this one to go on the lay frame. That way around. It's always a good suggestion to orientate the parts to the same as they are in the book. Just to make sure you get them the right way around. Excuse me sniffing, I seem to have woke up this morning with a bit of a head cold. So it's uh, filled up with, filled myself up with paracetamol and decongestants and hopefully we can keep going. That's that one, he thinks, yep. Not very good at denubbing, that's another one I've missed. And this one, the harness, would go in there. Sort of a shoulder brace for the for the gun. I'm sure you've all seen them on the on the war films. Now this one doesn't seem to have a locating lug so it's more a case of holding it till the glue sort of sets and it hasn't set yet. So just count and look around the workshop for a minute. Okay. There we are, it seems to have got to hold and uh, once again it's just a matter now of um, letting all these, even in the gun there's sub assemblies so we'll leave all these little sub assemblies time to dry and then we get them all together. God, it's all parts, all bits. See you in a minute. Flash, flash. Okay, right back to the uh, flak gun. Uh, we'll let the parts dry of course and now it's the interesting part putting it all together. Uh, it's quite simple uh, I've already test fit it once I won't lie uh, just to check it's all gone in uh, and just make sure that everything is the right way around uh, that needs to go that way 
something like that. A uh, bit of glue. I've got the instructions here to the side, just checking as we go along. Uh, yep, that looks about right. I found the missing part, this part here. Uh, what is it, C20? It comes from the sprue, C20. Um, and that is like uh, an elevation wheel, I think. So as the guy is uh, firing a gun, his mate can be winding up, or perhaps he does it himself. I can't remember now. Uh, that one. Go on. Try not to spring apart across the room to the carpet monster. There we go. That bit goes in there. piece on down like that. Excellent, okay. Uh, what next? We've done that one, done that bit. This piece can then take the gun itself. Not sure what size of gun this is. I'll have to look that up. And that way. It's quite fragile. There's quite a few bits on it, so just take care. Uh, it's fairly detailed, there's the uh, iron sight on the top there. Mm, go in that. There's a, mm, I did uh, test fit this, but I didn't do this bit, I forgot all about it. I think this needs a little bit of this rather than Tamiya extra thin. Uh, just put a bit of this on, this will just give us that extra bit of working time. Put that there. And that sits in there like that, I think. If it doesn't fall out. Just checking it's lined up. We're getting there. And that should then sit in there like that somewhere. Does it? It goes in like that, and I've just knocked this bit off of the back. I thought it was glued. Uh, anyway, see, it fell off. These things happen, especially when when you're filming. Right, that bit goes there. Leave them to dry now. Right, just point out this bit. This because it's all um, four to edge, all brass. Uh, the paint might not adhere to it as good as we want. It probably will. Uh, put, put the lid back on your glue because if you don't you've lost it all and you might you, uh, get rid of all the stripes on your mat never mind, right yep, right, what were we saying yep, the large parts of photo etch uh, wish and you could find a way to stop that flashing Right, the last parts of the photo etch uh, sometimes may take uh, a little bit of work to get the glue to adhere to them. Small bits, not too fussy about, uh, it, because it'll uh, it'll go on fairly well. But if it's a case of a large piece, I use some of this Mr. Metal Primer. Uh, I give the photo etch a coat of this before we go on to the primer stage. It just gives it that bit of an etch. Uh, just to get the paint to grab. Alright, now uh, we're just about finished with this. This should go on there. Like that, I think. Just trying to work out the right place for it to go. The instructions aren't exactly clear.
cop. I think they go in there like that. See, they fit to that little block just under there. I think that's the way it goes. It seems to fit both sides and it seems to fit fairly well. So that's where it's going to go. Sometimes you have to make a decision whether it be the wrong one or the right one. Metal pine, the glue that won't glue it. God. Do you have one of them days? Not full of cold and a glue won't set. something like now. I don't want to glue this bit on yet and that's going to go on there something like that on that part there. I don't want to glue that on yet because if I do that bit will fall off. Alright we'll let this glue set and we'll see you in a moment. Welcome, welcome back. Uh, I did say that I didn't think I'd probably be getting any paint on uh, in this episode, but I thought, uh, why not? We'll see what we can do. Just put this airbrush down a little bit. Now you may remember when we went out, oh, there's a piece falling off there. See how fragile it is? There's a little piece falling off. I'll have to keep that to one side and get it put back on later. Um, when it first started I said that um, the colour that the uh, instructions give, uh, trumpeter give, is 336 hemp. I wasn't exactly over happy with that. Um, I'd looked around uh, and I'd seen some uh, pictures of the way the people had done this on the internet and they'd sort of painted those in this green colour. Uh, which I thought was actually quite nice. Uh, remember, it's your it's your um, model. Uh, whatever you're doing, uh, you don't have to stick to the rules. Uh, you can make a change if you think something looks better. And in this case, I thought this green looked better. Uh, I tried a couple of colours out in the back of here, and you can see the hemp there. And this is the green one is olive green which I think was a bit too green and that was olive drab uh, was it khaki? oh it's khaki drab sorry or was it? I can't even remember what it was but it didn't look right anyway uh, so I thought I'd go and get some colours I had a look through my pots uh, my store and I had these Sun Valero colours I had uh, refractive green and I also had olive green now the olive green as you can see was a bit too green and the refractive green was a little bit too dark uh, as you can see compared to the pictures so what I did I made up my own now I must apologize for this because I can't tell you the formula for the color because I put some olive green in 
and then I put some refractive green in give it a shake tried it I wasn't right put a little bit more refractive green in still wasn't right so then I, I um, tried a bit of white as well uh, put that in to light it up a bit until I got to about the right color that I thought uh, I tried it with a little bit of paintbrush on the back here and it looked about the right color you can see under here a couple of little experiments if you can see the difference in colors there uh, because the color will change again when it's on the um, on the primer depending what color primer if I was to paint this in white it'll probably brighten it up again um, but I think that's about a nice color now well I'm happy with it anyway uh, and that's the way it's going to be so I've just finished the first um, base coat I'm going to let that dry and then a couple of piece, uh, pieces that I've missed I'll pick those up uh, with the airbrush later on but it certainly you can see the details starting to come out now in it as the colors pick up uh, the pipe work that I've just broken as well comes from there so I've got to put all that back on uh, so that'll do us right I've got to let this dry uh, as I said it's a little bit extra than I thought I would get a little bit further with the painting uh, now that's just got to go in steel grey I think or something like that the bottom part but I'll mask that off and spray it up separately uh, and we'll get on with it but it's looking apart right uh, that'll, about, that'll be about it for this bit of the engine uh, I'll come colour it up and then paint it all up and come back and show you it all finished see you in a moment okay everybody welcome back right uh, I've done the engine uh, I've geared it uh, its second coat of uh, paint the, the second colour um, I'm about ready to glue some of the really tiny bits on uh, and then I can get it all put together I've done the scattergun as well um, but uh, I've just uh, primed that uh, I will leave that for maybe the next episode uh, when we'll look at weathering the engine as well doing a little bit of weathering and getting the engine room finally all put together um, I'm sure you'd like to see some weathering so that's what we'll do um, right uh, the next part we're going to go and have a look at is something that you enjoyed last time when we looked at some game footage from silent hunter um when we could have a look around the inside of uh, a type 7c u boat uh so we'll have a look in the engine room uh see where all the bits go that we've just put together and have a look at that so uh, hopefully the footage should be over here uh, or is it is it over here uh, right anyway Either way, it's coming in. See you in a moment. Okay, here we are outside the engine room. Now let's go and have a look. Uh, we open the door. Mind your head as we step in. And just meet the chief engineer. Uh, just as he's examining his engines, waiting for the off. Because uh, looking at the telegraphs, we're all stopped. Uh, there's the port engine and the telegraph over the deck head down to the other side and the starboard engine identical engines the telegraph is a way of the uh, control room uh, telling the engine room what it wants from the engines uh, engine control levers uh, some ancillary equipment just around the engine room. Now let's shut the door, get the draft out. Okay, if we ask this chap to move, we can have a look, see if there's anything down at the side of the engine, see if we can see anything. Uh, no, it's just a bit dark, but once again, there's the control uh, panels and telegraph. Have a walk down past the engineer. Uh, looking aft to the generator room we'll have a look at that in another video uh, what about the rear of the engines now I think this is where the gearboxes are and the drive from the engines to the shafts lots of equipment lots of bits and pieces very dangerous very noisy uh, confined spaces noise smells anyway let's see where, uh, if the telegraphs move as the uh, end, uh, control room rings the engine room minimum speed ahead 
Yeah. We build up the speed slowly so we don't put any uh, torque or too much strain on the oh, gearbox. Once the shafts are turning, we can up the speed. And as you see, the push rods and everything start to move in the engine room. The engineer checks them all out. And of course, the faster the engines go, the faster these push rods move. Full speed ahead. That's got the boat moving through the water now. I'm not sure what this tank is above the engines. Maybe it's a, an oil holding tank. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Anyway, it's getting a bit noisy, a bit smelly in here. So we'll uh, continue to go back forward. Back into the galley. And there's that uh, strange looking chef. Uh, I, don't think we'll, I think we'll leave him alone today. Let's shut the door, keep the noise in. Uh, what's for dinner? Carrots, soup, onions. Mm. Oh well, let's leave these guys to the rest of the crew then, and uh, we'll see them again. Okay then, welcome back. Um, I hope you liked that little bit. It was just a bit of fun. Uh, just a, a little bit of footage from the uh, video game by Ubisoft, uh, Silent Hunter. Um, it's not a bad game. Uh, it fills a bit of time now and again, but uh, not often that I play video games these days. As you could probably tell by my movement around the submarine. Uh, hopefully the sound wasn't that bad. Um, anyway... Uh, that's really all for today um i've gone on a little bit longer than i thought i would have done i've managed to get the um second coat or the second color onto the engine if you could sit oh, if you could keep it in shot uh done that and we could see here just in if we can get yeah, somewhere in that i've started putting all the tiny little details in those little uh, valves and the push rods uh, the push rods that we saw in the video uh, trying to get them on, getting them fit, and um, we're all ready. Uh, the little um, scatter gun that's come together, that's quite a nice little model in itself. Nice, it's just in grey, as I say. I haven't done anything else with it yet. Uh, we'll look at painting the weapons up and everything else when we get to the outside of it. There's a, a, an 88mm deck gun to go on as well. Uh, so we could probably build that separately as well. We'll have a look at that. Uh, right, uh, as I say, the next video we'll have a look at getting this engine uh, weathered up. Um, we'll put everything else back together then. Hopefully, um, the next video won't be as long a between the shots as the last one. As this one's been. It's just I've had a lot to do uh, with all sorts of things, but uh, been going on anyway. Don't forget, if you're watching this and you haven't seen us in the live stream on a Monday night, myself and my good friend Fox, Fox Wolf, uh, we do the models live stream. Uh, come along at 9 o'clock uh, British summer time, is it is at the moment, well, soon GMT, as it will be in a few weeks. Uh, 9 o'clock UK time anyway. Come along, have a look. Uh, we're on YouTube. Join us at uh, the YouTube channel for e-models. And... Uh, look forward to seeing you all then anyway time for me to go time to go and get cracked on and do something else for you uh whatever that may be keep watching bye now bye <laughs>